Welcome to the snapshot of Getting Past Your Breakup, How to Turn a Devastating Loss into the Best Thing That Ever Happened to You by Susan J. Elliott. Here we'll explore the key insights from Getting Past Your Breakup. Introduction. Breakups propel us into some of the most confusing, devastating, and emotional periods of our lives. Your perspective on the entire world can be turned upside down in the wake of a breakup. To start rebuilding and setting things right side up again, you need to embark on a new journey. The destination is an entire life designed to make you happy with yourself. Roadmap to Healing. How this book will change your life. If only I didn't do that one thing, maybe it would have worked out. One of the first instincts after a relationship ends is to pinpoint what you did wrong and how things could have ended differently if something about you were different. If you're experiencing these thoughts, it's time to show them out the door. They are fueling a desire to change for someone else, but not yourself. Acknowledge that you need to heal and take measures to start your healing journey. This will help you not only move on, but also move forward with your life as a whole individual rather than half of a couple. At the end of any relationship, there is a significant sense of loss. You might feel strange trying to do all your usual routines that were significant to you and your ex, but think about it this way. This is a chance to improve yourself and discover new things along the way. Pain has one positive trait. It can motivate you to reassess your life in ways you wouldn't think of if you were comfortable. Three essential skills will help you make progress from the beginning. Observe. Become more aware of everything going on in your life, from experiences to emotions. Prepare. Anticipate the unexpected and how you'll respond. Cultivate. Incorporate positive changes into your life that will last for the long term. Start today by putting yourself first. Be selfish with your time, attention, and affection. To succeed with all the growth you're about to experience, you must have energy and emotional resources. The Rules of Disengagement Going No Contact with Your Ex Maybe the breakup was amicable. Maybe you want to know why it had to end. Maybe you just can't bring yourself to click the final unfriend or unfollow button. No matter what, the longer you stay in contact with your ex, the longer it's going to take for you to make progress in moving forward. For this reason, a strict no-contact policy is now in effect. The one exception to this policy is if you are co-parenting children or pets with your ex and need to develop positive communication involving them. You might think, but what if? Don't. Here's the reality of a few of the most common excuses for people who aren't ready to let go. We can still be friends. This is a doomed strategy. Even if the breakup was casual or amicable, people still need to distance themselves to adjust their mindset regarding the relationship so they can truly see someone as a friend instead of an ex. Even if you and your ex want to stay friends, going no contact until you're ready to be friends will help you have a better friendship in the future. I need closure. You need to search within to find closure. Don't beg for it or demand it from the other person. They still have things at my house. You're not responsible for safeguarding their belongings if they don't make an effort to retrieve them shortly after the breakup. The same rules apply for anything you had at their house. We're still going to see each other anyways. Having a lot of mutual friends, working together, or belonging to the same small community can make running into each other inevitable. And so no contact isn't always practical. If you must communicate for these reasons, only do so when you run into each other and without any kind of follow-up communication. You don't need to be friendly, but be polite. To resist the temptation to initiate contact, rely on friends or family to be your support system. Ask someone to hold you accountable during this fragile period so you have someone to call when you think you're going to reach out. You can also try writing in a journal every time you feel like calling their number. Also, make sure to take care of yourself and indulge in some fun things just for you. If you neglect yourself, reaching out will be even more tempting. Grief as the Healing Feeling Contrary to popular belief and cliched lines from movies, time does not heal all wounds. In fact, time can make things worse if you aren't using it wisely. Pain that's left unattended will continue to grow until you're carrying a mountain of unresolved grief and other emotions that affect every other part of your life. This is why it's important to grieve your breakup and go through the entire process of accepting loss. Grief doesn't happen in stages, but in fluid phases. These are shock, great emotion, and acceptance. It's common to go back and forth between these phases, as the path to healing is more of a zigzag with a few circles thrown in rather than a straight line. Shock. Shock comes with disbelief or an inability to recognize the loss. The mind has a tendency to shut down as a response to traumatic events to protect you from feeling too many emotions at once. The best way to help yourself through this phase is to acknowledge that the relationship is over and not returning. Then, turn to resources to help you process the reality as constructively as possible. All the emotion. This is the phase that will differ the most between individuals. People will feel a range of emotions, from absolute devastation to anger and guilt. Depression is also very common after breakups, as well as detachment from many aspects of your life. If you're experiencing deep depression or other emotions are making you lose control, it's important to seek help from a therapist. Harming someone or committing vandalism isn't justified just because you're angry about your breakup. Acceptance. In this phase, you start to move on and gradually feel at peace about the breakup. Your perspective will change and your priorities will shift, both consciously and subconsciously. 
Upon reaching acceptance, people often seek other changes to help them move forward. Acceptance is a gradual process. Slowly but surely, you'll think about your ex less, and you'll have a more balanced view of the relationship. Taking care of yourself. It's time to address one of the most important topics in making it through a breakup, self-care. One aspect of this is taking care of your physical self, which includes the basics like getting enough sleep and eating a healthy diet. Getting a massage or trying a new exercise routine are also helpful. But this won't give you everything you need. You'll need to incorporate mental self-care to help you come to terms with the breakup and give you the tools to positively express your emotions. This isn't about making drastic changes to make yourself better based on your ex or what you think you need to bring to future relationships. This is learning positive, life-affirming actions to help you work through your feelings and remind yourself of the fact that you are worthy. First, practice being kind to yourself by changing your self-talk. Use affirmations, short statements designed to create and maintain a positive mindset to help you dictate your thoughts and feelings about yourself instead of leaving it up to your subconscious. Your subconscious picks up on messages around you to define your self-image. If you only hear mostly negative things said about you and don't know how to generate positive messages from within, you'll have a negative self-image. You can control this by stating reactive or proactive affirmations at least once per day. There are three types of proactive affirmations. One, self-soothing. These allow you to take information you already know and believe about yourself and use it to reassure yourself when you experience anxiety. Examples include, I'm good at my job, or I have many accomplishments. 2. Image improvement. These encourage positive changes to help you achieve the things you want but don't currently have. These include, I feel at peace with myself, or I work on learning something new every day. 3. Action affirmations. These help you move toward your goals by reciting steps or actions to yourself. These can include, I'm going to work on exercising every day, and the first step is to schedule 30 minutes of exercise in my day. Pair your daily affirmations with a weekly date night with yourself. This is your dedicated time to focus on being at peace with yourself. Use this time to take scenic walks, indulge in a pampering session, or watch your favorite TV show. Whatever feels right for you, learning to prioritize yourself above everyone else establishes new standards for your future. 7 Rules for Making Things Easier for Your Children Parenting already comes with daily challenges. A breakup intensifies these, and it can become overwhelming while you're trying to work on your healing. Children will experience their own hardships during a breakup, and they'll often show this by acting out when they feel hurt or confused. There isn't a set guide to making this period easier for everyone, but following these steps will set up better communication to move toward healing. 1. Be open with them. Reassure your children that the breakup is not their fault. Without casting blame, emphasize that you or your ex were no longer happy together and that everyone deserves to live in a happy, loving home. If your kids are older, use this as an opportunity to introduce or continue a conversation about making good choices in life. 2. Be a role model for them. Your kids will rely on your strength. Keep your house and schedules organized to provide a stronger sense of security. 3. Your ex is your business partner. Communication is inevitable when you're co-parenting, and you should aim to show your kids a healthy, business-like relationship with your ex instead of openly fighting in front of them. 4. Don't introduce new partners to your kids right away. Even if you meet someone right after the breakup or you're just excited to date again, your kids won't feel the same way. Wait to introduce any new partners and make sure that your new relationship can act as a healthy model. 5. Child support. Give it and get it. Be honest about your needs from your ex surrounding the kids. If you're unable to resolve it on your own, go to the courts. Don't involve other family members or the children. 6. Be their parent, not their friend. After a breakup, many new single parents feel guilty about their kids having a hard time and let bad behavior slide or spoil them more than usual as a result. The kids will need extra attention, and having a few special treats will help distract them. But overall, you still need to be their parent, especially when they act out. Balance goals, boundaries, and limitations to set positive new structures. 7. Prioritize quality time. Give your kids something to look forward to while spending quality time with you, and use this as an opportunity to reassure them that each individual child has a special place in your heart. Overall, you want to be the best parent you possibly can, for both yourself and your kids. Don't be afraid to ask for help from friends or family to help you manage. Bringing the big picture into focus, the relationship and life inventories. Tying up loose ends isn't just about making sure your ex picks up their clothes and other belongings from your house. You have some work to do to make sure you're entering the next phase of your life with the right perspective. The grief period will cause you to look back on the relationship through a very specific lens, and this tends to give you a skewed view on what the relationship actually was. Without working to change this, your emotions will control you instead of the other way around. Put things in writing to help you balance your perspective. Write an inventory of your relationship or a series of lists to help you analyze the relationship to help you work through your feelings. These can include positive things about the relationship, but not necessarily your ex. Focus on the routines you liked or other fun experiences you had together. Five special moments during the relationship that you remember fondly. Negative things about the relationship. 
positive qualities about your ex that turned negative over time, such as them being neat but criticizing you for not being as neat. While you shouldn't force yourself to speed through these, it's better to do this within a couple of weeks of the breakup. After you complete the initial set of lists, sit down with your inventory and take notes about the things that hurt you or the things that you'll miss about the relationship. Then write a letter to your ex that you will not send. This letter should act as a chance to air your grievances, but also express forgiveness. Read it out loud to a friend or your therapist. Process your feelings and then say, thank you for the time we spent together and for influencing my life. It's time for me to let you go. Then burn the letter. You are in control of how and when you forgive, but it's an essential step in the healing process. Moving on, the path to real love. How do you know that you've truly moved on? It's a gradual change. It might take you a while to notice it, but eventually you'll realize that you think about many other things without immediately being reminded of your ex. Silence will seem peaceful instead of reminding you of a void. The sun shines a little brighter, your favorite foods taste as good as you remember them, and you find yourself laughing like a weight has been lifted from your spirit. You might still have some progress to make with your healing, but overall, you're doing well. At this point, it's your choice about whether you want to try and test the dating waters or just enjoy being single and happy. When you're ready to welcome someone into your life as a romantic partner, keep a few things in mind. Remember that dating is supposed to be fun and filled with new opportunities and experiences. If it starts to feel like a drag or obligation, don't do it. Keep conversations light and focus on listening as much as you talk. Don't bring up your ex even if your date begins to talk about their ex. Listen to what people actually say rather than waiting for them to affirm things you're looking for. Go in with an open mind and without a checklist. During the first few dates, you're just trying to figure out if you want to see this person again, not get into a serious relationship with them. Accept rejection with grace and without judging yourself for why another person may or may not be interested in you. It's perfectly normal for some residual grief to rise to the surface when you're trying to date again. Bad dates, or even good ones, can bring up lingering feelings of longing or hurt. Allow yourself to feel these feelings privately and remind yourself that how you feel about your ex is not a reflection of how you feel about this other person. For every situation or moment when you're in pain, you have three choices on how to handle it. Accept it, change it, or leave. For each situation, think through all three options. This will help guide you in the right direction and is incredibly helpful for navigating dating soon after ending a relationship. Real love does not demand you to change your priorities. Really being in love makes you willing to change and grow to help the other person grow with you. Real love helps you take all the things you've learned about yourself and move forward with them, not backward. Real love will help you make your life even more wonderful. Don't settle for anything less. Conclusion. Breakups are painful, but approaching and embracing the grieving period will make you more resilient. Even though this might sound like trying to find a silver lining, being alone is the greatest opportunity to work on yourself and figure out what you want in life without considering what someone else wants. But to see that positive side and start your growth, you need to go through the good and bad steps to truly heal. Right after the breakup, tell yourself that you're prioritizing you, not your ex. Go no contact with your ex. If you have kids or are still moving out of a shared home, minimize communication and keep it as businesslike as possible. Allow yourself to acknowledge and understand the phases of grief, shock, emotion, and acceptance. Reach out to your resources to help you get through each phase and prioritize taking care of yourself. Work on your emotional healing with self-affirmations and do the inventories exercises to work on your perspective about the relationship. When, not if, when you're ready to start dating again, take it slow. Focus on having fun with new experiences. Don't immediately try to find a long-term partner or prove something to yourself. At every stage of the process, do everything you can to give yourself significant credit for staying strong. The greatest love comes from within. The rest is just a matter of finding other people who are worthy of your love. About Susan J. Elliott Susan J. Elliott is a lawyer, certified grief counselor, and relationship expert. After spending her childhood in foster care and abusive adoptive homes, she found new meaning in her life after the end of her first marriage. She has coached thousands of people through her Getting Past Your Breakup Counseling program. She is an acclaimed speaker and hosts her own advice podcast called Mean Lady Talking. Elliot is a graduate of Mount Holyoke College and the University of California Berkeley School of Law. Thank you for listening to the snapshot of Getting Past Your Breakup by Susan J. Elliott. If you liked what you heard, then make sure to explore the rest of our snapshot library to continue gaining key insights from nonfiction books in a matter of minutes. Thank you for listening to our quick learning audiobook review series. If you liked what you heard, then check out our channel for more free audiobook reviews. We post new audiobooks every week. And don't forget to like and subscribe to our channel and hit that notification bell to be first to hear of our latest reviews.